Who can accept this talk about eating bodies, drinking blood, the spirit being the key to life and not the flesh, which we put so much emphasis on? I mean, this is difficult stuff to accept. I just came back from a small island in the Caribbean where the native language is a compilation of about four or five different languages because of the various influences in the development of the country. If you know a little French or Spanish or English or Portuguese, you're likely to recognize a word here and there when they're speaking but the rest is mostly confusing if you don't know the language. This is what is happening to the disciples. They understood those concepts which were familiar to them, but when they were exposed to something new or radically different, they became confused, turned off, walked away, and usually missed out on a blessing. Being exposed to something radically different will do that to you. It messes with your mind. It causes doubt, suspicion about what you've been asked to believe. At least it does for me. Here's an example of what I mean. For years, whenever we got the chance, my friends and I would pool our money together and go down to Barnet Get Light in New Jersey and go fishing. It was always expensive. Even back in the 80s, it was expensive. And if you wanted to catch some of the bigger fish, it would cost much more, like three to $500 per person because you needed a bigger boat with fancy equipment to locate and handle such fish as tuna or marlin, the really big fish. So when I saw a handwritten sign on a chalkboard at a resort on this Caribbean island that said fishing trips $75, I thought, oh, I guess we're going to go fishing for some cans of tuna, like bumblebee or chicken of the sea, because that kind of fishing is the only kind of fishing you can do for $75. And to make things worse, the man said, no, you won't be going out in a big boat. You're going in a little boat, a boat that's just a little larger than a church pew. I said, a church pew? Is that a Baptist pew or an Episcopal pew? (laughs) And he said, a Baptist pew. And I said, oh, Lord. He wants me to drown over a couple cans of tuna fish. Then he said, you won't be needing a fishing rod because everything is done by hand a radical idea, a modern-day parable given by a man with a funny language. Like the disciples, I turned and walked away wondering if this was a scam of some sort. But the spirit of the day appealed to me, and I later agreed. Jesus said to his disciples that the words he spoke to them were of spirit and life. Words which open the doors of sustenance for both the body and the mind. A new way of thinking that gives life and life more abundantly than we've had before. Beloved, I got up the next morning at old dark 30 in the morning and made my way down to the docks where the local fishermen gather and got into my assigned Baptist pew for the fishing lesson of the day. To my surprise, he wasn't joking. 
There were no rods or fancy equipment to tell where the fish were, only large rolls of fishing line and cut off pieces of bicycle tire inner tubes, which we placed over our fingers to protect from the burns and tears of the pulling fish who didn't want to come to church. <laughs> he used a simple system of fishing line tied in slip knots around larger pieces of inner tube to alert us when a fish got on the line. When a fish got on the line, they pulled the slip knot and we would see that there was a change. We caught tuna. Jesus is calling for us to take in more and more of his flesh and blood every day. It is the knowledge and awareness of a spirit-filled life that his flesh and blood brings to us. It is the peace of knowing that for every situation, there are multiple solutions. Why? Because we have a God. And with this nourishment, we will never be hungry. Not in the body, nor the brain. I don't know if I've told you this next story before. I think I have, but, you know, it's worth repeating because it's so important to understand how God's Spirit moves and works in our lives. It's about a man who the doctors told that there was no cure for his disorder. In fact, they're still telling people around the world that there's no cure for this ailment. Several years ago, in a science center building on Market Street in downtown Philadelphia, there was a 56-year-old African-American man working there as a front desk security guard. His problem was that he was turning white. No, it wasn't Michael Jackson. <laughs> it's a condition called leukoderma or white leprosy. I know you've seen it. It's a discoloration of the skin that happens gradually over time. So you may see part of an arm or face or back in its natural dark pigmentation, and then the other part as white. And for some, it is emotionally disturbing. Well, the doctors told him that there was no cure, but Jesus has disciples everywhere. How many of us believe that today? Jesus has disciples everywhere. And in that building of great scientific minds was one such disciple. A little man of height about only five foot tall. He grew up in India with little to nothing to live on but his faith. Throughout his life, he fed on the nourishment of Christ's flesh and blood, leading him to soak up every ounce of knowledge he could hold in that magnificent brain of his. He didn't have money to purchase a microscope when he was younger, so he used the sand and fashioned it into a lens which he used to study cells and the effects of chemical reactions on those cells. An amazing feat. A radical way of thinking. Then, many, many years later, he received multiple PhDs for his work in biochemistry and other areas. He runs into that melanin-depleted man in the lobby of that building at a time when the security guard was ripe for a blessing. There's a couple ingredients here. You need God's spirit, and we need to be ripe for a blessing. He and the guard began to talk about life and became friends. After getting somewhat comfortable with the Indian man, the guard shared his story about doctors being unable to help him. And the little man from India said, perhaps I can help you. For what you have is just a problem of cellular communication. 
and I know how to make cells talk. The doctors say there is no cure because this teaching is difficult. 2,000 years plus have gone by and we're still having trouble listening to Jesus. But this little man, so eager to digest the flesh and blood of Jesus, allowed his spirit to ride in that little fishing boat of life, which allowed him to do what others could not. So he gave the man an oil, which he concocted in his lab from medicinal plants that he had collected, and said, here, rub this on your skin, and then go outside and stand in the sun every day for 15 minutes. The man said, I can't do that. I don't like the sun. It's too hot. And I work indoors all day. When would I have time to be able to go out and stand in the sun for 15 minutes? He's a disciple of another kind. One who struggles to eat the flesh of Jesus. So then the little man said, well, I'll bring the son to you. Here, take this lamp, which shines full spectrum light from a bulb which costs less than $75, and sit under it at home after applying this oil. Some weeks later, the one's depigmented parts of his skin were now pigmented. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, this teaching is difficult. Who will accept it? We don't all have to get into a small boat or have our skin lose its pigmentation to be awakened. We simply need to feed on the body and blood of Christ because its spirit brings life and life abundant. Amen.